I'm Molly Manning Walker, director of Good Thanks You, and I'm with Chris Gordon on How Blazer Biz. Everyone, I have the proud pleasure of Molly Manning Walker's company uh, this evening. So, hey, Molly, how are you? Hey, very good, thank you. How are you? I'm great, thank you. You are a UK cinematographer and filmmaker, which is a nice, interesting mix. <laughs> yeah, the different mix, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> okay, excellent. So, I mean, well, we're going to start in there. So, why did you want to go into cinematography in the first place? Because that's a, that's a very niche. And a specialist area to just suddenly to, to to sort of start out with. So I was always into photography and like making little films on like cameras and stuff like that. And I went to film school and I started studying documentary and cinematography and kind of wanted to look at being a documentary director, but but then also shooting them and them myself. And then the budget the budgets that the film school gave the documentary kids were really rubbish so I was like hey all the all the fiction students get to play with like toys and they get like (laughs) sets and like they're all like much more uh finance the films Mm -hmm. and so so I sort of swapped swapped over to just doing cinematography for fiction and it kind of stuck um so I still love shooting documentaries but definitely was uh it was a pivotal moment yeah Excellent, excellent. Fair enough. And and I mean, you, I mean, you've obviously you've had several short films you've done as well. But you've got and your award winning, and even your first film went out well, as a cinematography. You won an award at your Student Academy Awards as well. So you, know, you started out straight away winning awards. So come on, <laughs> <laughs> pretty, pretty <Thank> impressive. <laughs> How have you found starting up in the industry? Because it is a cutthroat industry. Yeah, I think it's really brutal. Um... Uh, I think you just got to keep going though. Like, I mean, I sort of like forced my way in there by just shooting every, I bought myself a little camera and just shot every day. And then I think social media has kind of changed how cutthroat it is because you can Mm -hmm. kind of put out, you can output, you know, as much as you want. And in a way it kind of tricks people into thinking you're working all the time. And then they're like, Oh, that person's working all the time. Great. And I was just going out shooting stuff in the street, like just like, super excited to shoot all the time mm. and putting it out on Instagram and then got started to get real jobs which was nice <laughs> <laughs> excellent I think social media has become yeah you like you say it's, it's really changed a lot of the film industry lately I mean I've had actors on my show before and they've turned around and they've they're trying to boost their Twitter and stuff because they say that some places will hire you based on your following your Twitter account totally. and stuff. it doesn't matter whether you know whether you've got any experience or not but if you if you've got a high twitter following then people think you're popular so they'll put you in whatever they need to so you know these actors have been working years and years and now trying to get their get their profiles up because it's, it's just a new brand it's a whole new ball game it's crazy yeah so crazy but true <laughs> so do you have any filmmakers that inspire you um like eliza hitman is like my my favorite filmmaker i would say Mm-hmm. Um and but I sort of started off with the like um I mean like the sort of like the Haynes and Steve McQueen you know like the sort of French filmmaking yeah. as, as I always call it um, with yeah Celine Sciamma um indie French cinema is kind of where my heart is at and then how that translates into Hollywood nowadays is 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 kind of amazing how it's done that. Mm. Yeah, there's there's quite a few filmmakers I've met who've got that kind of inspiration and moved up, and and it's yeah, it's it's definitely taken over, um, and that is they're looking more at the art form, which is what that that whole cinema is about. It's it's the art of the film rather than just like you know blockbusters. So they're, they're you know, exploring the actual art behind it. I mean, I grew up with sure. uh, I studied German film, so I grew up with Fritz Lang and things like that, and studying you know those types of really early ones. Uh, and I still love Fritz Lang. I think he's a, he was just an <laughs> amazing, amazing um, <clears throat> vision. Uh, and But it's that kind of cinema that I really enjoy as well, the one which actually really makes you think and has got the message behind it. Uh, another silly question. So if you can, <laughs> about inspiration. If there's anyone you could bring back to life or someone who's still with us, 
who would you love to work with? It's in a kind of similar vein to the last one. Who would be the worst person you'd love to work with? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, <laughs> I think probably, uh, you know what? I, I probably would love to work with Eliza Hitman. She's not dead, but I would love to work with her. So that gives me more chance, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's more. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It does help if yeah, if she is still with us, which is great. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Maybe, maybe one day you can as well, which will be, which will be exactly <laughs> one of those one of those moments of life where it's just everything comes together. So, which is seems to be for you the way your films are going. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're there. It's, I mean, I say it's, it's as I mentioned before about obviously getting into film as well. I speak to a lot of women in film and and this regardless of how much we've come on there is still a huge amount of patriarchy in the film industry so you know to actually be able to get out there and push out there is is absolutely phenomenal and it's really you know fully respect for the fact because there are so many powerful women writers and filmmakers like yourself who, who, who were pushing out there and actually getting getting the recognition you finally deserve as well yeah for sure i mean it's like we've come a long way but there's such a long way to go for sh- and like you know, my mum's a director and she really struggled and like you know she was really successful when she was 25 and mm-hmm. she, then she kind of had kids and it and it sort of all fell apart from her and I think you know there's like there's a step we're stepping slowly step by step yeah. towards something that's more equal for all of us but definitely hard Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, you can see it now. And um, I, I mean, I'm fandom. I'm a member of some several fandoms, and which I obviously become a geek. <laughs> Star Wars, <laughs> Star, obviously Star Wars being the biggest one. And I, I just see stuff like that. And like, um, there's like episodes of The Mandalorian which I absolutely love. And then if you've got a female director on there, there's so many. There are people who still criticise, and it's like, excuse me. But you know, Bryce Dallas, Bryce Dallas Howard at the time. So the episode she directed was phenomenally good, and it's like, why, why do you still have this? I just can't understand why people have this hang up over that at all. It just winds me up, and it really does. Which is why I really try and push and support, obviously, you know, women in film. Because you're right, we've got a long way to go, and there's such, you know, it's it's getting recognised. But yeah, you, you still look at like the big Oscars and stuff like that. And you say, all right, okay, <laughs> yeah, we're still behind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's still a huge, um, yeah, huge gap there, but that you know is getting there, and it's, you know people like yourself are pushing that forward, which is fantastic with with you know with what you're doing. Which is, oh, which thank is, you. Sorry, yeah, <laughs> lost for words now. There, Molly. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, obviously, we're here to talk about good. Thanks you, um, or good. Mm-hmm. Thanks you, uh, which however you would like, however you say it, which is. It's a powerful film. It is. It's a. It's a nice. It's thirteen minute. Just yeah, just about thirteen minute long short film. Um, and again, I find it fascinating that you guys can make short films and pack such an important, powerful message and story <laughs> into something so short. Uh, it's just you know, it's really, really um, great. How long did it take you to shoot that in total? Three days. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, three days we shot. Yeah, and. I mean, so much prep, but three days to shoot, yeah. Um, which we probably could have done it in shorter, but because of the nature of the of the topic, it was it was mm. necessary to give enough space for it. Yeah, I can imagine for the for the people involved as well when they when they're doing that as well. It's you know it's, it does hit hard when they're thinking about obviously getting into the storylines and stuff as well. Everyone, and then you had ninety percent from female crew members as well out from behind the scenes as well, which is again brilliant to get involved. So. You really had that because it is, a, you know, the, it's a very uniquely. I wouldn't say well, it is a uniquely female story because it is because yes, okay, we we've got male abuse out there and that that does go on sadly, but obviously we the, the story and the message behind it is definitely with, with, with you know for female abuse and stuff like that. So to have and have that female led vision where everyone has probably obviously got the same, com- yeah, and, and look, outlook on it. Be, it was amazing to just hear like how many I mean not amazing but horrible to hear how many people on set have experienced something similar really? and then when you're all working towards something that is like a collective passion that everyone wants to tell a story yeah. um, 
then it's really really powerful and 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 people you know I think when we were shooting the the assault scene it was like very upsetting for a lot of people on set and mm. and uh and yeah I mean yeah it's it, I think I didn't really I, especially as a cinematographer I'm surrounded by men on set all the time yeah and you don't really realize the 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 power of what what a female set can do until you're kind of experiencing it yeah yeah i can imagine um uh, like you said with the with the con with the way the, the the content of the film the story of the film the you can really imagine how much more yeah, how much more empowering it is to have that on there and it's quite shocking actually and sad to hear um like you just said that so many people have experienced stuff like that on, on you know um in such a small environment such as you know to film one one short film and, yeah. um, but again, I think that's another thing that this industry has been rife as we've found out quite a lot as well in recent times. And me too, it's like, there's a, there's a lot of things there, which is really is horrific. And I mean, just speaking of horrific, I mean, this is obviously based on, well, not based on, it's, it's formulated. You thought of the idea of, of bringing it to the audience from your own experiences as well. Mm -hmm. Um, which obviously I don't want to go into because <laughs> that's quite hard. I mean, I'm happy to talk about it, but yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so obviously that's where the inspiration for the film has come from, that you wanted to get that message out there. Uh, and I mean, Amy, the character herself, she's, from what I've seen of it as well, the, the, she's just, the, it's brilliant because she's disassociated the entire way through and the from whether uh, I might be wrong in how I picked some things out, but for, forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, obviously, the, there seems to be a lot of pressure on her as the victim, and I think that's brilliant because the message that whenever you see it on the news and whenever you read about it, you always seem to see and it's like she's asked by the police, "What were you wearing?" You know, and so oh, you know what 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 what, what clothes were on. So she started describing the guy, and then and no, 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 what were you wearing? It's like who gives a damn what you were wearing? Who cares? You could have been wearing a short, you know, not with you, don't sorry, yeah, 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 with short mini skirt, a crop top, or whatever. It's not what it doesn't matter what you were wearing or what the person was wearing. There was, you know, the assault happened to you. So, and that's what well, that's the message. That's how I kind of got to feel was the way the police was kind of putting it back. Or maybe if you didn't dress like that, you wouldn't have had, you know, they wouldn't people wouldn't have come on to you and stuff like that. And that's I feel is a lot of what. Um, not having gone through it myself, but obviously seeing, reading about it and seeing it, that's how I feel. A lot of people feel at the end of the day that that's how they're treated. That it's like they're, they're made to think it's their own fault. Yeah, totally. Like I felt as as when I went through it that it was a total blame game. That like people were trying to quickly disarm like the the abuser from from any blame and 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 even people who watch the film now they're like no but they wouldn't ask you that and i'm like but they did so so you know like how do we it's easy for us to say it but until you've experienced it and you know that like this is the kind of approach that they're taking it's like yeah it's just as shocking as it is in the film it's like you could, even as a 16 year old when i went through it i was like this is crazy why are they asking me this you know i was aware of how how crazy that was mm. um and and and, uh, and hopefully that rings true in the film. Yeah, it did come out, and it's it, that's how that's the message I got from it. it. Was very very much still that it's the victim is the one being blamed for it all, and the, well, not blamed, but it's you know it made to feel like it's the victim's fault rather than sympathising with the actual victim. And, and coming from that side of things, there is still very much in in the society, in the police system, in court, you know, law society, where people are still looking to try, especially if it's a young girl as well, like yourself trying to push that across or with like Amy trying to push it across and say well you know you must have done something to have, have, have brought it on and it's it's sad it's really horrible and, and just it's just quite it's, it's emotional to watch the film and think that's how it's still happening you know we're in the 21st century for crying out loud you'd think things would change wouldn't you um, yeah you'd hope <laughs> <laughs> um Obviously, I mean, Jasmine played the role brilliantly. So, how did you approach the cast to begin with? Because she was—I mean, they're all really good, but she obviously was the main character, Amy. Um, Jasmine is someone I saw in a play. I mean, she's a powerhouse, firstly, but she—but I saw her in a play about five years ago, and she hadn't done she hadn't done much yet. And, and I was like, she's the girl. I, I really want her to play it. And it was sort of like bubbling at the time and we couldn't get her. We didn't get her in any way. Eventually, when all the stars are kind of aligned where we had the money to make the film and the script was much better and mm -hmm. 
and we had much better support around us um yeah she she finally said yes and so yeah she was kind of always the one and I'd and I'd and I tried really hard to get her so yeah I'm really I'm really glad that her career's taken off in the way it has yeah, yeah, she definitely, definitely has. And, um, you know, she, she, you're right, she's a powerhouse. She was really, really good in that film. She didn't have to, you know, it's when an actor can talk to you without actually saying any words, that's when you know how good they are. And she was, you know, I mean, you know, it, there was quite a few moments in there and just the expressions on her face, the way she would move. And, and it really, you really knew exactly that you felt exactly what she was going through in there, you know, and, and, I like you say the dislike, as I mentioned before, the disassociation with people and just like even the basic touch and stuff, which normally would have been fine. And all of a sudden, it, no, that's, you know, immediately associates it with, with what she went through. And, and it's, it changes the dynamics of relationships. It's, it's, it's horrifying. It re, you know, I mean, I, I know you've been through it, so apologies, but yeah, it, mm-hmm. it, it, it sounds like I'm teaching you to suck eggs, but I'm not, I'm trying to explain, you know, trying to explain. It's like, um, it really does. It can't, it shows how, how, much of it affects not just you, but the relationships around the person as well, and and everything. And it's in that the message from the film. If that's the message you're trying to portray, that's the message I got because definitely because it was really, it really was a, um, a power, a really good film just to to come out and say that. Thank you. Yeah, that was definitely the message. Um, just to like, no one ever talks about how you can move on in with relationships or partners or or it's always about how how to get prosecution, which isn't necessarily always what you're looking for yeah exactly you know i mean it's nice to get the, someone prosecuted but you're right it, it's the emotional side how do you when you've got a partner how, how do you move on you define how do you talk to them how do you explain what's happening you know and that's that is brilliant and um yeah and it finishes too soon because <laughs> that's just <laughs> <laughs> you're literally just sitting there and waiting and it's just <laughs> And it's the end credits. You're like, oh, <laughs> which is what? How I guess the feeling that you spoke. You, you know, you, you. That's what you're looking for people to feel at the end. Is like, yeah, <laughs> it's like it's got there. It's got to that bit. <laughs> so how does it feel? I mean, you've been selected for over twenty film festivals as well, and including the Oscar qualifying ones as well, which is what Bogo Shorts as well. I think it's if that's how you pronounce it. So how does that feel? That must be brilliant as well. I mean, I've already said you started off award winning, so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it feels good. Like, it, it's an interesting experience because we never really made the film for festivals. You know, it was made mm-hmm. for, like, to open open the discussion. But, like, what what I'm realising more and more, especially at, at, in this year where we've all been, like, festivals have gone online and, yeah. and everyone's been sort of at home ready to watch things is that, just given the film the most amazing audience to be able to be seen and not to be you know stuck in the stuck in the ether so it feels good it feels like we're doing both we're getting the film seen and we're sort of like getting critical acclaim which is kind mm-hmm. of you know what more could you ask for well yeah exactly <laughs> it's a per- perfect mix like i say 2020 has <laughs> been horrendous for some, for most of us all of us but then in some ways it's not, it's been great. Cause like, um, and be honest, just like you say, even regardless, like you say, you didn't make it for film festivals, but the fact you're getting your message out there and that message is now going and it's reaching all these people. It's reaching is people like me, uh, you know, who's <laughs> come to me and, and, and seeing this. Um, so yeah, the, the, there's definitely, the message is getting across and it, it is pushing out. And that's a, that's a really critical, that was, that's the whole reason for the film, but that's a critical point is to push that message across the world and, and open and like, you know, open that discussion. It's not, or it is a difficult thing to talk about, a very difficult thing to talk about, but it's not impossible, you know, and that's, yeah. And that's definitely um, what we should be doing more of and, 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 and bringing it out into the fore. For definite. I think if we've learned anything from this year, it's like we should be talking more with with our loved ones yeah <laughs> regardless of how difficult things are and or how difficult the topic is it, yeah it's just open up and it, you know things are too short and and you know yeah or in some cases like why well, you're stuck indoors with the same people for eight months <laughs> you've got no choice it's like okay i've, I've finished netflix now what do i do i'm gonna have to talk <laughs> exactly. but yeah, no, 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 yeah you are right you know it's it's Open, it's a great message to open up and talk and be free to open you know to be free to talk and don't feel ashamed 
especially in that situation, is no, you don't, you shouldn't feel ashamed. It wasn't, it's not the victim, it's not your fault, it's not the victim's fault, it wasn't Amy's fault at all. Um, <clears throat> and society needs to change that viewpoint that that's, you know, they still push you to make it look like that because um, they definitely are. Mm. Excellent. Um, yeah, you're kind of working on, I know you're working on another feature at the moment. You probably can't talk about it, but it's all about, all I've got is a line saying you're working on a feature at the moment, which is with film four, which is another your direct, directorial debut for a feature. And film, and, you know, yeah. you get a pretty better than film four either, to be fair. That's a cracking start for you. Is there anything you can tell me about that? Oh, I don't actually know how much going. I can, <laughs> how much I can say, but uh, it's a really good, um, it's like touching on the same stuff, uh, okay. on the same topics, and uh, sort of uh, we're gonna have a shot at making it next year, and um, if Corona backs off, and uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm really excited about it. It's uh, it's like it's, it's kind of it's a topic that's like really close to my heart and yeah um yeah fantastic a feature would be great i mean obviously i'm not going to go into it i'm not going to get you in trouble by, by saying too much about it um but yeah obviously I, I can appreciate that and a feature film would be great as well um to build on that story and build on it because you can get so much message in a short but i can just imagine how powerful a feature on it would be um, and the success that that will have as well, obviously, regardless of whether you want the success, whether it's, obviously you do want success, but I know it'd be written because <laughs> you want to write, because you want to get the message out. So uh, again, yeah, the, sure. the audience it will reach will be fantastic. Uh, cool. Before I wrap this up, is there anything that you'd like to say to people who are listening or watching? Uh, no, just if you get the chance to watch the film, then that's amazing. And if you get the chance to talk to your loved ones about it, then that's even better. <laughs> 